So I'm getting several questions about what exactly it is that I expect of you in these discussion forums. Well, let's start here with the general discussion rubric. This is the rubric, and by that I mean the component parts that are you're going to need to include in every one of your discussions and how I'm going to grade you on them. That's what the chart at the end is about. For right now, uh, let's just talk about generally what I expect out of every discussion, all of the ones you're going to submit. Okay, it's based on you looking at those questions, and I'll show you those questions in a minute when we move to the second document, which is the one that I sent you that is the discussion questions for this week. It is based on you answering those questions and doing it in a cogent, organized way with a lot of historical evidence to support your ideas, right? Okay, so effectively, to find the discussions, there are a couple of different ways to do it. If you're on Brightspace and you're on our page, uh, you can actually, if you'll notice, there's a banner. Uh, there's a big banner that tells you that you're in GGC's Brightspace thing at the very top. And then just under it, there are a list of different things you can click on that will take you to specific places, like the content page, which is the page I normally start on. Um, it's what's organized in the folder as the folders for each week. Uh, but you also have a thing you can click on that'll take you to just the assignments and a thing you can click on that'll take you just to discussions. So any of those ways, uh, any of those three ways, you can get to where you need to be. Um, for the discussions then, uh, there's one, like I said, there's going to be one in every week. I haven't finished all of them yet, but I've got the first several set up and going. Uh, you're going to go to that, you're going to read that set of questions, and you're going to think about it comparative to what you've been assigned to read and or watch that week. Um, as I mentioned in a syllabus post a few minutes ago, um, I because I assume many of you will not have a textbook this week, I set it up entirely with videos, but you do need to get your textbook, whichever one of the three you choose, because next week you will have to use the textbook uh, to as, as a reference point and for the information necessary to address those questions. For this week, it's just a series of videos. You're going to read the required content or watch the required content. Um, you, don't have to, you don't have to read or watch the ones labeled uh, recommended, but those will help you also. Um, they'll give you a broader perspective on what we're talking about. So this week you're going to watch those videos and you're going to uh, consider the information that you're getting out of those in the course of addressing the answers to the questions. Uh, if you've looked at the videos, you know that they cover a variety of different places, um, all of which existed effectively going into 1500. 1500 is our kind of starting point. Uh, for this course, uh, it's always interesting to me that you effectively have hundreds of thousands of years of human history in uh, Civilizations 1, and then Civilizations 2 literally starts, it's literally a 500 year course. But a lot of that is because so much has changed in the last 500 years. Um, going into 1500, so much of the way people lived throughout the world was the same way they had been living uh, for thousands and thousands of years. The majority of the structure of society was based on food production. 90% uh, of the population was invested in that food production. The 10% that wasn't uh, were people who had managed to find ways to support themselves without having to be directly involved in food production. And that's normally why most societies were structured uh, with a small number of people at the top that were either emperors, kings, aristocrats, uh, religious leaders, the, the, the top really special important people um, and then the further down the pyramid you go the more people there are in lesser positions almost all of whom have something to do with food production because that was very important and pretty much no matter where you were in the world that was the case uh, some societies lived better than others and that's a big part of what we're looking at this week uh, which societies were the ones where it would have been the best place to live where you as probably one of that 90 percentile group of people producing food still had a higher quality of life than everybody else. And that's one of the, the ideas to consider in the questions you're answering this week. So 
Uh, if you were to argue one specific place, you'd want to be able to show me why. Not only why in that specific place things were good, but why they were not good in other places. This would be part of proving your argument. So, um, so in this rubric, what I have here is effectively an example of that. Uh, this section right here is uh, an example taken from effectively a question from a Civ I course on uh, the joys of living in ancient Greece. If you were asked that question, these are the things you'd want to consider. These would be pieces of historical evidence you would want to include. Um, you definitely want to include as much history, as much example as possible. What you're going to find and what I find, especially in the first uh, couple of weeks of any kind of course where I'm asking people to consider and give me their opinions, because all of the questions I'm asking you are effectively opinion questions. I'm not asking you effectively, you're not right or wrong based on how you answer the part that's your opinion. What you're graded on, what I'm looking for, is how well you prove to me that position. And the proof is, again, in the historical detail. So um, you're going to want to put in there as much evidence as you can because you don't know very much of what we're going to be talking about. I assume you don't. I could be wrong. Maybe you've all had APA classes in uh, high school or taken this class before and uh, you're back for whatever reason. That's all great and good, but the assumption is that you're not going to know a lot of this information straight off the top of your head. Therefore, it is not common knowledge information. It's going to be information you've been taking from videos and books. Therefore, it's actually an idea that comes from somebody else. And in some cases, you're going to actually quote things for me because often what you've read uh, is a better explanation than you can put in your own words from the idea. So you're just going to copy and paste it. In all three of those situations, you must cite it. You must cite it. This is not a negotiation. Uh, citation is mandatory for this class. It's going to be mandatory in everything that you turn into me. So just go ahead now and accept that. And look at the fact that you're using literally the simplest citation style there is. Uh, the American Psychological Association style guide, which is uh, laid out for you here. I'm giving you a specific example and specific explanation. Uh, it is a parenthetical citation, i.e. when you get to the end of the sentence where you have used information from someone else in whatever form you're using it, you're simply going to put the last name of the author and the date, and that applies if it's a website or something published online, or if it's in a book or a journal or something with page numbers, and it's the author date and the page number. The idea being that I can then uh, check your work by going to your work cited page where I'm going to find the full citation, as we see right here, the full citation, which on that page is going to be that same author, but it's then going to be the title of whatever the thing is you're looking at, whether it's a book, whether it's a journal essay, whether it's a website, whether it's a web page in a website. You're going to put the date, and then you're going to put the publishing or posting information. If it's a book, that's going to be the publisher's information. If it is a website, it's going to be um, the, the web link itself. Uh, if it's a journal article, it's going to be the magazine and the issue of the magazine, uh, whatever it takes for whoever is reading it to be able to go find and locate that source and see where you are. Okay, so uh, here's an example of how that's going to operate. This was a straight quote out of uh, Strayer and Nelson's Ways of the World Volume 2, one of the books that you actually have the option to use for this course, uh, in which case if you choose to use it, look, I've just given you effectively how to do a works cited entry for that, as well as how to do an internal citation for it. So in all of your discussion posts, you're also going to be required to include something original, i.e. a multimedia component. And you have a whole citation for it as well. It can be a YouTube video, it can be a link to uh, an essay or a journal article or uh, some academic site somewhere that has written up something about the topic of this discussion question that you found interesting and that you can use. I mean, you can find stuff all over the place. It's to basically make sure that you're understanding what you're reading, 
and that you found some mechanism by which to um, bring somebody else's idea into your discussion. It's not going to be that hard to do if you're using one of the textbooks. Uh, textbooks actually have at the back of the chapter some sources listed, some recommended sources. Uh, you're welcome to go to one of those if it's something you particularly like. Link it in your uh, in your discussion post. It's also helpful for other students. Uh, people who are having trouble understanding a lot of this, you may find a really, really good uh, short documentary um, that explains the idea or explains one particular concept in what we're talking about um, that you really like and you think explains it well. Yes, link it. Uh, help out your fellow students. That's always a good thing. All right, so there are your components of what you're going to be doing, and here is, hopefully, the actual rubric itself. Now, I've broken this into four components. General knowledge, which is effectively the knowledge you get from the textbook, how you are uh, regurgitating that to us, how you are putting it in context while answering the questions. Critical thinking, which is analyzing these ideas critically, thinking about where the information comes from and what it's saying, and also the multimedia component you're bringing in. That's uh, demonstrating to me that you have been thinking critically about the information because you found something you think works to explain it or some facet of it very well. Your peer comments, uh, again, you need a minimum of three of those, and they need to be spaced over three different days. The idea, again, we're going to do this as a discussion forum, i.e. it's ongoing. It's not just a check in, drop something off, then check in, drop something else off and be done. No, I want to have this as a learning experience. And then your citation and your clarity, how well you've organized your presentation, uh, how, as in your discussion post itself, how coherent it is, how easy it is to read, and of course, how well cited it is uh, where you're putting things. The highest position, the one that uh, I call distinguished or excellent, that is effectively the A position. Good, uh, the B position. Uh, basic, the C position. And then D and F are the other two positions where you just haven't actually uh, done anything there at all or haven't done what you need to do. So uh, this is the rubric I'll be using to grade your discussion posts. Um, so it's all laid out right there for you. Um, so if you have any questions about this, let me know. I am going to go right now very quickly. I didn't mean for this to take up so much time to the actual forum itself. These are your questions. Um, hang on just a second and I'll close that down. There we go. The world before Columbus. So effectively, uh, this is uh, the setup. These are the videos that you are required to watch and you should be able to click on that and go right straight to it. These are recommended references, things that you might find to be interesting, other ways to do this. The actual questions themselves are right here. What's life like for the average person in 1500? Where was the best place to live and why? The worst place to live and why? Who had the highest standard of living and what does that mean? How did Western Europe compare to the rest of the world? Why and why do you think history today from the why do we think of history today from the perspective of the West? Should we? Why or why not? There you go. Uh, nice long uh, thinky kind of thing where you're going to be using a lot of historical information to back it up. All right. Bear in mind there are sources that are not valid sources. Wikipedia, anything that is open source, anything that anybody can change, that is not a valid website. Please don't use those. Um, Look for academic websites, look for uh, websites that are reputable, uh, as in, and by that I mean literally reputable in the sense that somebody's reputation is staked on the information that they're publishing, i.e. their name is on it, uh, they have some kind of credentials that show that they're an expert or they've spent a lot of time studying this. You want to use valid academic sources. So this is what you're going to be doing for this week. You're going to be answering these questions using those videos. Um, and then you're going to be asking and answering questions to your peers as well. If you have questions for me about any of this, uh, something I haven't explained, um, email me, let me know, and I will see what I can do. Thank you.